What's going on movie fans? My name is Michael Weir and I like to talk about movies. In this video we're going to talk about five of the best and five of the worst movies from 2023 so far because we are officially at the halfway point for 2023 with six full months of movies behind us and six more months of movies to come. Now I personally have seen 45 brand new releases in 2023 so far and I'm excited to give you guys these but I want to say that these aren't necessarily my top five best movies or my bottom five movies as of right now. These are just five movies that I want to highlight because I really enjoyed them or five movies I want to highlight because I really had a terrible time in the movie theater with them. With all that said, just like previous lists that I've talked about before, this list probably not going to match your list, so I would absolutely love to know five movies you've really enjoyed this year. Throw those down in the comment section down below, or five movies that you really haven't liked this year. Throw that in the comment section down below, and you get bonus points if you tell me why you didn't like them. With all that said, let's jump into five of the best, five of the worst for 2023 so far. Jumping right into the positives, guys, the first movie I want to highlight on the best movies I've seen so far this year would be Dungeons and Dragons. Not only was this movie a huge surprise, I didn't have a lot of hope for it going into it, and I've never played the game before, but this movie exceeded all of my expectations on every level. This movie was a lot of fun, had a lot of heartwarming moments, but it also was very funny thanks to Chris Pine, Michelle Rodriguez's back and forth, and it also had some horror elements in it that I wasn't expecting. There's a moment with a witch when she senses someone else in the room and she just witches out and it was probably one of the creepiest moments I've had in theaters so far this year. So Dungeons and Dragons, it's a fun family friendly movie, but it's also a really kick ass time and I recommend it to all of you. The next one I want to highlight is definitely not a family friendly movie, but it is called Inside and it stars Willem Dafoe and I believe it's streaming somewhere like Peacock or HBO Max, one of those right now, but oh my god, Inside with Willem Dafoe is a descent into madness. That's the best way I can put it. It's one man trapped in an apartment and he has to learn how to survive in that apartment with very limited things. He's trapped in there. It's like soundproof. Nobody can hear him. He's way up top so he can't just jump out a window. He is stuck in this apartment building and it is... I love it. I love every second of it. There's this there's this moment with a pigeon and Willem Dafoe staring at each other and he just says, just us pigeons in here. It's great. It's great. I really recommend it to all of you if you enjoy psychological thrillers because that's basically what this movie is. Inside with Willem Dafoe is excellent. The next movie on this list is going to be John Wick Chapter 4. This is a movie that gave us all of that John Wick flavor, whether it was the world building, the action set pieces, maybe even the emotional ties that you get to some of these characters. It gave us all of that while it continued to give us brand new characters and not feel overcrowded. I can't really overstate how big a deal that is because most of these movies, once you start putting too many new faces, too many new characters, the movie just feels over bloated and you you don't end up getting a great experience out of that because you're like, well, I'm following this guy's story and now this guy and this guy. But they were able to find a way to add all of them together, but still keep Keanu Reeves's John Wick as the focus of this movie. But everybody in this movie performed well. It's the most action-packed movie of the year. It's a thousand times better than anything the Extraction movies are being put out on Netflix. I don't understand all the love for those movies to each their own, I guess. But with that said, John Wick Chapter 4 is an excellent movie if you haven't watched it. You need to. Next movie on this list is going to be the feel-good movie of the year. This is a movie that I left the theater with a smile on my face. I really did. I absolutely love this thing from start to finish. I love the soundtrack. I love the set pieces. And it's Air. Air is a movie directed by Ben Affleck. It stars Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Jason Bateman. It also stars Chris Tucker, Viola Davis. Like, so many people are in this movie, and they do such a good job with their acting. The acting alone brought into this movie is excellent, but then you get the story, and the story is just a shooting. Deal. And when they can make a shoe deal between Michael Jordan and Nike, probably the most lucrative shoe deal of all time, let's be honest, but when they can make a shoe deal that much fun, that exciting, and that intense, you got something special there. And I absolutely had a great time with Air. It's a movie that I recommend to everyone and a movie I can't wait to put on my shelves and rewatch over and over. The final movie I want to highlight on this best of list is going to be Infinity Pool. Infinity Pool is directed by Brandon Cronenberg and is a dark, seedy, grotesque movie. And I loved every second of it. It stars Mia Goth. And that was really the drawing point for me to go to the movie because I saw her in X and Pearl last year. Loved her in those movies. And I was like, all right, I got to go see this movie. So I went and saw Infinity Pool back in January. And I have thought about it at least once a month since then because the movie 
it not only is it a dark and grotesque movie, but it's like a thinking man's movie. It makes you think about it. Like you consider the decisions the characters had to make throughout this movie all the time. Like I'm just sitting there like, okay, so if I knew I could get away with doing something horrendous, as long as I cloned myself and then let my clone die, would I do it? But then on top of that, would your mind start to break because you're wondering, okay, wait a minute, am I the clone? Am I not the clone? Like what, what's going on here? And then the people around you are just this horrible influence to make you make those terrible decisions. I loved everything about it. I think Infinity Pool is one of the biggest gems of the year so far. Again, I didn't number these because there are a couple movies that I would probably put above all of these, at least one, but I don't want to go into that because I will have a top 10 best of list. With all that said, let's jump into the negative side of this video and let's get into the movies that I dislike the most. Right off the bat with the negative side of things, we've got Ben Affleck's Hypnotic, which is too bad because he was also in Air, which was wonderful. But then, yeah, he made this movie with Robert Rodriguez. Hypnotic is just boring. And not only is it boring, but the plot tries to make like 10 Christopher Nolan twists at the end of the movie and none of them registered. None of them are impactful to you because you've been watching this story that you just don't really believe the entire time. And when you finally get to that twist ending, you're like, all right, that's not a bad twist. Oh, another 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 twist. And it's too much. It's, it's just too much. Hypnotic is boring and then infuriating toward the end and I don't recommend it to anyone. Next up guys we have a horror movie on this list and that is Children of the Corn. This is a reboot that came out this year and I think there are 12 other Children of the Corn franchise movies and none of them matter so you go into this movie blind and you'll be okay but you'll end up hating that you wasted all of that time because this movie gives you nothing. This movie gives you nothing. It shows the kids turn on the adults, but then they immediately have all the adults in custody. And you're like, well, well, I would have liked to see like, you know, how they took over the town or how they were able to do it. Because keep in mind, they're kids. They're like this tall and they're just taking over things. And then there's moments where people are like, I'm going to have a heroic moment. And then boom, they're dead right away. And it's supposed to be a shock factor, but because you didn't build any of the characters on either side, it's just annoying. And then when you get to the end of this movie, you actually see the he who walks behind the rose and, and I said this in my review, but shouldn't it be he who stalks? Just throwing that out there. But he who walks behind the rose comes out and he's just this CGI corn nightmare. And it's ridiculous. And then the end, there's just this super simple way that the good guys win. And I, it, it's, it's annoying. It's another infuriating movie. Children of the Corn, don't waste your time. I wanted to walk out of the theater, but I couldn't because I limit myself to one movie a year that I can walk out of the theater for. It's just a rule I have, and I already used that on Skin of Rink. So I sat through Children of the Corn, and I was just irritated by the end of it. Next movie on this list is another extremely boring movie, a movie that had a lot of potential based on the trailer, and that is Kandahar. Kandahar stars Gerard Butler, and it is a movie about a CIA operative that's stuck trying to get out. He's got a base in Kandahar, so he's trying to get there with his translator. And honestly, when it stars Gerard Butler and that's the setup, I'm like, well, this is going to be a kick-ass action film. And there's a couple of action set pieces and one in particular that was enjoyable. It was like this helicopter skies. Just the way they shot it was enjoyable. The action scene itself, not enjoyable. And then I didn't understand what they were going for with the message of this movie because every person, whether they were a good guy in the movie or a bad guy, got like a sweet send-off where they got to call out to their personal god. And I was like, well, why are we wasting time on this? The movie was way too long for a runtime for this kind of a movie and not enough action for a Gerard Butler-led action film. Just, there was hardly any. So with that said, Kandahar, definitely a movie I don't recommend. The next movie is a movie that really disappointed me. And if I make a top movies that disappointed me list at the end of this year, this one's going to be right at the top. And that is 65. 65 stars Adam Driver and it is a dinosaur movie. Like... Adam Driver, dinosaur movie, like what could go wrong? And basically everything goes wrong. There's not enough characters in this movie for you to feel the intensity of the dinosaurs. And what I mean by that is you've got Adam Driver and this little girl and they're crash landing on Earth 65 billion years ago. And so there's dinosaurs everywhere. And then they've got to try to get from one area to another area so they can leave in an escape pod. But while they're on their way, they get attacked by dinosaurs. 
But since there's only two of them, you know they're both going to be just fine at least till the end of the movie. So if this movie had added in 10 to 20 characters that could all get eaten by dinosaurs along the way, add some stakes, that would have been pretty cool. The dinosaurs in this movie, I guess, looked fine. But again, when you take away the element of anyone being able to actually be eaten by a dinosaur, it takes away that fear we have from watching those dinosaurs on the big screen. When you have a big group of people and several of them are definitely going to be eaten by dinosaurs and you're just waiting for it to happen, that makes it more intense. But in this movie, it's just like, all right, well, there's only two of you and I've seen the trailers. Y'all make it to the shuttle. So I... What are we doing here? We're wasting our time is what we're doing here. And then you had Adam Driver and the little girl with this subplot where she didn't speak his language. And so he would just shout words at her in English. And it was like, I'm pretty sure that's not how it works. But then she would start to understand those words. And I was like, no, that's not, that's not how this works at all. So another irritating movie I don't recommend to anyone, which is too bad because Adam Driver and dinosaurs, it should have been a good concept. It just fell flat. The final movie that I'll highlight on this list of dislikes, the movies that I don't recommend you show to anyone or watch yourself, and that is Nefarious. Nefarious is a movie that is a Christian-based faith film, which doesn't necessarily make it bad, but it's just the way that they portrayed all of their ideas. You had a demon that was essentially better than the atheist in the movie. So a demon, the guy who works for Satan, was like, yeah, but morally, I have the high ground. And I was like, no, <laughs> what the the atheist who is a person who in the christian faith could technically be saved and used by god in this movie was worse than the demon and the demon kind of the good guy and that's just a weird message to send to people and while i try to stay out of that completely and look at both sides of the spectrum and watch both sides of the spectrum's movies because every year the left and the right put out propaganda piece movies and we watch them and i'm like all right well wasn't a big fan of this, but I like this. So looking at Nefarious, I was like, okay, what do I like from this movie? And honestly, there's not much to like. There's maybe some of the acting was done pretty well by the characters in this movie. But outside of that, the, the story, the plot, I don't like the idea that the demon in the movie is the good guy. Oh, and yeah, they throw Glenn Beck at the end. And if you ever want to get me to not enjoy something, either use Dave Ramsey or Glenn Beck. You use one of those characters, I'm out. And they use Glenn Beck and I just... I have no time for that. So with all that said, guys, Nefarious is definitely a movie I don't recommend to any of you for the reasons that I already stated. But with all that said, guys, those are five of the best movies I've seen so far this year and five of the worst movies I've seen so far this year. And I would love for you guys to let me know in the comment section down below if you agree with my thoughts on these movies or if you've got a list of your own. I'm very curious to see how this list is going to shape out at the end of the year. If any of these movies will be bumped out of the top 10 completely, we'll see. It just depends on what we get. Hey, if this is the first time you're finding my channel, I would welcome you to subscribe to my channel. I've got a ton of movie reviews on there, including everything we just talked about and 35 more reviews from 2023 as well. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see y'all next time. Well, guys, we made it to the end of another video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. It helps the channel. It helps the video and it helps me right here. But with that said, guys, if you want to check out any of my best and worst ranking videos of 2023 so far, you could check right there for that. Or if you want to check out any of my 2023 reviews, you could check right there for that.